I want to talk a little bit today about what it means to let go and let God. Letting go and letting God is somewhat of a cliche in these days. Most people who talk about letting go and letting God have let go of nothing. They try to continue to control everything in their lives. All of us like to have control over our lives. But being a believer in Jesus Christ and a follower of the Lord teaches us some important things about how we turn things over to the Lord, about how we surrender. Surrender is one of the great elements of the Christian walk. We have to surrender. We got to surrender our lives. We got to surrender ourselves. We got to surrender our souls, our challenges, and our concerns with to God. So we don't carry that stuff. We surrender it to God and God handles it. But we have to trust God to handle it. Well, letting go and letting God has some requirements. Number one, you got to do the work. Before you let go and let God, you do the work, the work that's necessary for whatever it is you want. You know, people tell me all the time, you know, pastor, I'm looking for a job. And I said, where you been looking? Well, um, and they start hemming and hawing. They're not really looking. They want, wanting and looking are two different things. They want a job. They haven't gone out to look anywhere. People tell me, Pastor, I want to, I'm looking for a husband. I'm looking for a wife. Where are you looking? Well, I'm praying and I'm waiting on the Lord. Where are you looking? What are you doing? You got to do the work. You got to do something. I always make jokes with people. If uh, you're looking for a wife or a husband and you're sitting at home, then the only person who has the potential of becoming your spouse is somebody who's delivering something to your house. So you're limiting God's possibilities by not doing the work. You have to do the work that's necessary. Do your part. Do the part that God has given you to do. Second, cover it, the situation, with prayer. Cover it with prayer. Pray without ceasing. Cover it with prayer. Immerse it. Submerge it. As a lot of my prayer warrior friends say, bathe it in prayer. Bathe it in prayer. That means you immerse it to such an extent you don't even see it anymore. It's covered in prayer. You pray constantly about it. Third thing, fix it with fasting. Now, a lot of people say, Pastor, I can't fast because I've got certain health conditions. Or I can't fast because uh, I need to eat this, that, that, or, or the other. Here's the reality. You can fast no matter what your health conditions are. You can do a modified fast that just takes all the bad things out of your diet. You can fast from television. You can fast from the internet. You can put down the telephone and stop using the telephone. You can stop using social media. All of those things are a fast. They are a way in which you can step away from the things that are getting between you and God, the things that are taking your attention and your focus off of God. Fix it with fasting. When I uh, was in school, I took a class in photography. And when I took the class, I learned some important things about taking, uh, doing pictures. Nowadays, everything's digital, done by computers. You don't need uh, any of this good stuff anymore. But when I was in school and I learned photography uh, in the way in which it had been done historically, uh, you would take a photograph, you would uh, go into a dark room, remove the film from the camera, uh, shoot an image, of the film, of the cap, the picture that's on the film onto a, uh, a sheet of uh, photo paper. You put that piece of photo paper into a developer and then you develop the picture. The picture then begins to appear on the piece of photo paper, but you're not done then. The last thing you gotta do is fix it because fixing guarantees that your photo will stay on the page. Without fixing, the photo will fade. Without fixing, the photo will disappear. What you have gained will go if you don't fix it. In your life, that which you desire, that which you pray for, you fix with fasting. You fix it with fasting because when you turn down that plate, when you make that sacrifice, whatever that sacrifice may be, when you give up whatever it is that you're gonna give up, for your fast, you are fixing it 
so that the result that you desire will not disappear. It will not change. It will remain because you fixed it with fasting. Then finally, you have to turn it over to the Lord and watch God work. See, turning it over is the hardest part for many people because many people are not willing to let something go. They ask God, Lord, fix my relationship with my, fam with my family, fix my relationship with my spouse, fix my relationship with my children, and then they put their hands back in and they start messing with it. And in the process of putting their hands back in, they are doing things that they have no business. They are doing things that they don't know how to do. They're doing, in, they're engaging in ways that it is not your role to do. Because you have a part, God has a part. If you get in God's part, you're crossing boundaries you don't need to cross. Don't get in God's way. Don't try to do God's business. Let God do God's work. You do your part. You do the work. You cover it with prayer. Fix it with fasting. And then turn it over. This is what requires faith. It requires faith to turn your problem, your situation, your circumstance, or your loved one over to God and then sit back in faith and assurance and trust that God's going to handle it. Because God will. But you got to turn it over. You turn it over and then you sit back and watch God work. Now, for those of us who have experienced the miraculous blessings of God in our lives by faith, we know that when you turn it over to the Lord and you sit back in faith and wait, it takes patience. Take some patience. You have to be willing to wait. But when you do, God will move and you will see the glory, the marvelous works, the, the, the phenomenal blessings of God in your own eyesight. You'll see it for yourself. Letting go and letting God is simply doing the work, covering your situation or circumstance in prayer fixing it with fasting and then turning it over to God and then watching God work. I believe if you do that, you'll see miracles in your life, miracles you've never seen before. Trust me on this. God wants to work the miraculous in your life. And he wants to do it today.